100 Animal Crossing Easter eggs and references from throughout the entire game franchise in just one video. Ready, set, go. In the original Animal Crossing game, if you catch a loach, there's a reference about it possibly being a Hylian loach. This is actually a reference to the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, where there is a super rare fish in the fishing section of the game that you can catch that is known for being one of the hardest fish to actually catch in the game, one of the rarest fish. The Hylian loach has been discussed online for years and years, however, the one interesting thing about it is it's not actually called the Hylian loach. It's actually a Mandela effect, where everyone remembers the original Zelda game referring to it as the Hylian loach, when really it was just called the Hyrule loach. And it seems like the writers of this Easter egg were either aware of the Mandela effect or fell into the trap themselves, making this Easter egg even more unique than anything else. Also in the original Animal Crossing game, possibly one of the rarest Easter eggs that can occur is when you are riding out in a boat with the captain, there is a chance that a giant whale shadow will appear beneath the boat. It's something incredibly eerie that most players have never experienced. Fortunately enough, Animal Crossing YouTuber JVGS Jeff had an encounter with the whale in 2018 and was able to document it, and it's pretty incredible. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you're fishing and catch a squid, you will get a small reference to Splatoon. While this is obviously a funny Easter egg because it's Nintendo, it's even more unique when you realize that the same studio specifically within Nintendo and team that makes Animal Crossing games work on the Splatoon franchise as well. If you pick up a fake Mona Lisa in Animal Crossing New Horizons, there's actually a secret key taped to the back of it, which is likely a reference to the Da Vinci Code. When cars were added to Animal Crossing New Horizons, YouTuber Popendo actually realized that each car has a unique license plate that is a reference to Nintendo consoles that were released over the years. Also in Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you only have one star on your island, there's a chance that Isabel will give you a resident service quote where she'll say, it's a place I've been quietly watching. It's a secret to everybody. I don't want it to be famous. This is actually a reference to the Legend of Zelda series with the whole, it's a secret to everybody. The character Gulliver himself being shipwrecked in various weird islands randomly for whatever reasons we want to think he is, is actually a reference to the book Gulliver's Travels. It was originally written in 1726 by Jonathan Swift, which was a satirical novel about a shipwrecked man that obviously has commentary to philosophical reflections to modern societies of its time. I don't know, I tried to read it in high school and I got really bored. The Animal Crossing jock cat villager Rudy may be a reference to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer since he has a red nose, or also it could be a reference to the film Rudy, a 1993 sports film about some football player who wants to play at like Notre Dame or something. In WarioWare Smooth Moves during the nine vault level, there's a mini game that involves one player controlling an Animal Crossing character from Wild World. Essentially, you have to use the Wii remote in order to catch a fish from the river, and that's about it. The KK Slider album, KK Techno Pop, may have its album artwork inspired by everybody's favorite Black Eyed Peas album, The End. Ever since the first Animal Crossing game, there's been references to various Nintendo properties like Mario and Luigi's clothes being wearable. You could find NES games, obviously, which was a big deal in the GameCube days. But interestingly enough, when Animal Crossing had its first character make a debut as a playable character in Super Smash Brothers, the villager was given the ability to use balloons, like from the game Balloon Fight, which is a classic NES game that was in the original Animal Crossing game, but it itself actually had nothing to do with the villager or anything in Animal Crossing. Kind of a cool double reference. The Animal Crossing villager Bam is likely a reference to Bambi, and the Animal Crossing villager Amelia, who is a bird, is likely a reference to Amelia Earhart, who was the first female to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. For a long time, Digby was one of the few main characters that was cut from Animal Crossing New Horizons, and before the amiibo appearance in the cafe, the only real reference we would get to Digby was when Isabel would either mention forgetting to wake her brother up, or during the firework festival, Isabel would say that she got a jacket from her brother, which was a small reference to the character without actually name dropping him. When you hit a money rock in Animal Crossing, the little one-up sound is actually from Mario, and when it comes to furniture, there are some clever outdoor furniture items, which are good references to things in Japanese pop culture, like Gundam or Godzilla. The ocarina you can get in Animal Crossing is actually the same shape and design of the original ocarina you could get in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Typically, ocarinas come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but this model is obviously unique and associated with Zelda. Also, the start menu sound is reminiscent to the start menu sound from The Legend 
Legend of Zelda series. The album KK Ska has this album artwork, which is likely an homage or reference to the different album artworks that the Ska band The Specials used across their discography. The Bird Villager Ace is likely a reference to the idea of a flying ace, or the fact that in the original game, he also had an ace literally on his shirt. In the original Animal Crossing game, there was a slight chance that at one given time, Tortimer would ask you to take a look after the lighthouse for him while he was out of town, which meant despite the fact that lighthouses have been in every Animal Crossing game, only in the original game could we actually go inside of the lighthouse and turn it on, which was really cool. The album art cover for Surfin' KK features KK Slider riding a wave while playing a cool red electric guitar, which may actually be a reference to one of two album covers from the real world, or maybe both of them, which is the Oceans of Fantasy album by the Euro-Caribbean group Boney M, or the album cover of Surfing USA by the Beach Boys. Kazumi Totaka is a Nintendo composer and sound director who's been with Nintendo for a long time, working on a ton of different Nintendo games over the years. And in nearly every game that he's worked on, somewhere in the game, he hides a hidden song in various Nintendo game titles. And Animal Crossing New Horizons is no exception to this, as you can hear his 19 note song play on the radio at a random given time. Back when Animal Crossing New Horizons came out and the popularity of the game was at its peak, Progressive Auto Insurance actually made an ad that kind of looked reminiscent of Animal Crossing to try to get people to sign up for their insurance. The Animal Crossing villager Kiki is actually really interesting as the inspiration for this character more than likely comes from the anime film Kiki's Delivery Service. In this anime, Kiki has a black cat who she can talk to and it's likely that they made a black cat character and then gave it the name Kiki as this double homage to the film. In the original Animal Crossing game, if you connect your Game Boy Advance to the Game Boy Advance adapter in your GameCube and then travel with Cap'n to the little secret island you have, you can get some cool shirts. Yeah. In the video game Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, there's actually unlockable DLC skins for Isabelle and Rossetti, which is pretty awesome. And in Animal Crossing New Leaf, there used to be a tree in the main plaza of your town that would grow with each consecutive day that you played the 3DS game. Eventually, if you played for 365 days, your tree would look like this. Unfortunately, this villager's name is Angus, which is probably a reference to like an Angus patty, and he's a cow. Rest in peace, my dude. In the older Animal Crossing games, if you put a lucky cat in your house, there was a chance that you could have better luck with the in-game luck mechanic, which is this whole extra thing. You may have noticed that there are villagers that are all numbered and seem to be a part of some super team. It's very likely that this is an homage or easter egg to the popular Super Sentai series, which originates from Japan. Matter of fact, while the North American version of this series is Power Rangers, the shows are actually quite different as the English localization just hired American actors for the non-fighting scenes and then they just kind of wrote a quick story to tie up why they're fighting in these suits with Japanese monsters. But yeah, as a big fan of Denji Sentai Mega Ranger, this little reference goes a long way. Also, there was a 7-Eleven villager that has existed and could possibly be the seventh member of the team, which has left a lot of people wondering who's the sixth member of the team. And there's rumors out there that Isabel, at one point during the Pocket Camp game, has worn the sixth outfit. I don't know if I believe it, but apparently Isabel may be the sixth mysterious villager. The Animal Crossing villager Jeremiah is likely a reference to the song Joy to the World by Three Dog Night, which has the lyrics, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Back when Nintendo was promoting Splatoon 2, they did a live concert event, and K.K. Slider actually appeared and opened up the show by playing the Animal Crossing New Horizons music on a virtual stage in front of everybody. Later on, when promoting Splatoon 3, Nintendo decided to do this again, but this time brought DJ DJ KK on the stage and he did a 30 minute DJ set playing various Animal Crossing songs from throughout the game series. On top of that, Cap'n even appears as one of the dancing villagers, though he's walking his boat this time, which is a cool little Easter egg they hid in there. In Animal Crossing Wild World, if you shoot 15 balloons down, you can get a golden slingshot that shoots three rocks at a time. Mr. Rossetti was one of the bigger Animal Crossing characters from the older games, though not 
having as much of a role in New Horizons where we don't really get to see him. He's the mole from the rescue services if you've ever had to use it and you're a newer Animal Crossing fan, but older Animal Crossing fans definitely know this character, and he is an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Besides a ton of other Nintendo-related furniture items you can get in Animal Crossing games, New Leaf had some really interesting ones like Majora's Mask or even Samus' Helmet. YouTuber Komoji Nico actually translated what's going on on the television screen during the TV show that plays in Animal Crossing. The KK Slider song two days ago is actually full of really interesting references. First of all, the album artwork looks like the album known as With the Beatles, but on top of that, the name of the song is a play on the song Yesterday, as the song is called Two Days Ago, and it even borrows some melodies from various Beatles songs. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, there was a secret puzzle game that allowed you to play Puzzle League, but it's Animal Crossing New Leaf themed, which is really cool and makes me sad that Animal Crossing New Horizons doesn't really have any mini games. The Animal Crossing villager Coco is likely named this because her head is a coconut, I guess. But no, that's what I always thought was the case, but it turns out that it's actually a double meaning for Coco. Yes, there is the coconut head reference with the three holes on Coco's face, but also the fact that cocoa beans are used to make chocolate and we have a bunny rabbit, thus also making Coco a chocolate bunny at the same time. But interestingly enough, this villager is one of the only normal type villagers that doesn't have a face change of expression, because she really can't. In Animal Crossing on La Di Da Day, some residents are known for singing themes from other Nintendo titles like Super Mario. There's also other songs that they can sing, like songs from Big Brain Academy or even Yoshi's Story. In Animal Crossing City Folk, if you use your Nook points, you can actually buy some really cool rewards that are references to some pretty cool things. Sometimes snooty villagers will say, I'm here today to eat prunes and yell at kids to stay off the lawn, and I'm almost out of prunes. Apparently this is a reference to the 1988 film, They Live. In the Wii U launch title, Nintendo Land, there is a whole Animal Crossing dedicated level. If you travel to a different island from a host who has a different localization of Animal Crossing with a different language, the stores will still be called the stores that they're called in their native game language. Though all the villagers will be translated to your localized version. If it's raining, amphibians don't wear raincoats. They just soak it in. Some people have noticed an Animal Crossing New Horizons that their art might actually be haunted, with little weird nuanced things happening from time to time. The Animal Crossing villager Dom may be named after the term dominating as he has been dominating all of his exercises. I can see why he's a fan favorite. In the museum, there's this section that show the evolution lineage of various different species that are featured in the Animal Crossing world. The villager Marshall may be named as a reference to a marsh mellow? Yeah. YouTuber Game Sam decided to see what would happen if he had eight players all playing at the same time and then got stung by wasps. Unfortunately, it looks like the game does not like player one. Raymond's name may actually be a play on Raymond James Financial, as this is reinforced by his initial clothing and home decor that he has, as he kind of looks like a financial advisor or consultant of sorts. Also, the Animal Crossing Sanrio amiibo card villager Rilla is 100% based on Hello Kitty, despite the fact that she's not a cat. During Halloween time, Orville will actually wear a simple Halloween costume. Tasha's name is really interesting. It's likely short for Natasha, which sounds like nut, and she's a squirrel. Yeah, real clever, Nintendo. Audie is actually a really interesting villager, as she is likely named after the Animal Crossing grandma who had played hundreds of hours of Animal Crossing New Leaf and had a little bit of attention online a few years back. Now, there's a whole Animal Crossing villager named after her, which is really cool. Marlo is one of the newest Animal Crossing villagers only being added in the Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise update, though in his description it's suggested that he has ties to the mob, something I didn't even know existed in the Animal Crossing universe. If you have a villager come visit your house and you have cockroaches in your house, the villager may freak out and choose to leave your house. In some of the older Animal Crossing games, if you weren't keeping up with your island or maybe you were gone for a real long time, there was a chance that a Rafelsia would grow 
grow on your island, and they just kind of looked weird and had bugs around them sometimes. In the original GameCube Animal Crossing game, if you change your clothes despite Nook giving you a uniform when you're working for him, he'll kind of freak out for a minute and talk about the youth these days, but then he lets you wear whatever you want anyways. In Animal Crossing City Folk, YouTuber Kamugi Nico decided to see what would happen if you set your clock forward from 2035, and as it turns out, it goes back to 2000, which is interesting because Animal Crossing City Folk released in 2008, and the default time it goes to is eight years before its release. Also, Komugi Nico found that in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can see insects escaping from the museum in some parts, which is really interesting. Sometimes when you're getting coffee, you might get asked if you want pigeon milk, which is really gross. In Animal Crossing Wild World, occasionally you could talk to Tom Nook, and he'll start talking about his single life and iterate that a lot of people assume that he's divorced or something. This is just some lore I didn't even know existed, but it's really fascinating. If you're in the museum late at night in Animal Crossing New Horizons and you go to the skull that is known as the Ostelopath, it sometimes occasionally glows, which is super spooky. Okay, a lot of people probably know this next one, but obviously Tom Nook is named after a Tanuki, which is like a Japanese raccoon dog. There's another really interesting play on words when it comes to Tom Nook here, with the name of Nook's store, Nook's Cranny, which is a play on the phrase nooks and crannies, like when you're looking for something you can't find it and you say you looked in all the nooks and crannies or something like that. I don't know. Still, it's a clever naming device. They did this a couple other times with some of the other iterations of nook stores, like Nookway likely being a reference to, I don't know, Safeway. Okay, this next one probably doesn't count, but I just wanted to bring it up because I literally never really remember this. And I remember back in the day, this was a big deal, but weeds on Animal Crossing Islands are super annoying. And way back in the day, there was rumors that there was a secret lawnmower that would just mow all the weeds up that never existed. But nowadays they finally acknowledge this and you can actually hire Leaf to weed your entire island. Yeah, I don't realize that that was a thing now, but it's kind of cool. Way back in the original Animal Crossing game, if you played enough for a long period of time, you surely had some villagers move out of your village. But one thing that's really interesting is that after your villager moved away, there was a chance that that villager would at one point return and visit your village for a day. It wasn't something very common that would happen and not a lot of people actually got to see it happen, but yeah, it was something that could happen in the game. Also in the original Animal Crossing game, this one's just funny because I never noticed it until way later on, but if you hit the door at Nook's store like three times with a shovel, you'll actually wake him up and he'll let you in to shop, though he's not as happy and he gives you less of a deal when selling things and everything's more expensive, but it is interesting and it does paint a little bit of a picture of Tom Nook, apparently he just sleeps on the floor uh, in the side of his store. I guess it makes sense because he doesn't have a house. One thing I've always wondered about in all the Animal Crossing games where the villagers that have shops set up sleep. Now I guess we have an answer. You probably remember me talking about Totaka earlier on in the video, the music director at Nintendo who hit his songs in all of the games and whatnot. But as it turns out, in the original Animal Crossing game, K.K. Slider's real name is revealed to be Toda K.K., which obviously is a reference to Totaka. He's also naked. For a while, Nintendo actually sold official Nintendo Monopoly boards, which are really interesting. They're actually pretty bare bones and basic. But one thing that is interesting is depending on what year you got your Monopoly board will actually dictate what is on there. And if you have the second version of it that was released in the mid 2000s, you may have Animal Crossing characters in your light blue section of the board, where if you have an older version, it was originally Star Fox. So at some point they decided, you know what, Star Fox, not really that relevant. Nobody really follows Star Fox anymore. Rest in peace, Star Fox. It's kind of a forgotten franchise by Nintendo often. Let's put Animal Crossing on there. And they did. Okay, I also don't have footage for this one, and that's why it's kind of here at this point in the video. But did you know Porter, the monkey from the original Animal Crossing game and in Animal Crossing New Leaf, he kind of operates the train system that controls where you go visit other villages and whatnot. He's not there in Wild World as they did the whole gate system. However, a lazy villager may tell you a story about him remembering a cool monkey at a train station in the village that he grew up in, which is kind of a cool homage or reference to the character that was absent from New Leaf, and nobody really knew if that character would ever come back. He did, 
and then he went away again and never came back in New Horizons, but it's still a pretty cool Easter egg. Also, in Animal Crossing New Horizons, there is no need for a train system, as now we have planes that can also land on the water, if you didn't know. But Orville and Wilbur, they are brothers, and they also are dodos who cannot fly, and actually some of the only extinct creatures to appear as a living creature in Animal Crossing. But their story is actually even more clever. Besides the fact that they are dodo birds, they are named after the Wright brothers, the first people to ever invent an airplane. And of course, back then, people also assumed that humans would never fly, and look what they did. They made airplanes. So Orville Wright and Wilbur Wright were the first people to invent an airplane, and they are now Animal Crossing villagers. Look how far they came. There's also a reference to the Nintendo game Punch-Out that you can get in the form of this wallpaper. Yeah, I don't know why I decided this is the last one for this whole video, but here we are. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to Rocket Elijah. I'm a new Animal Crossing YouTuber. I've only been doing this for a couple of months, and it's been a lot of fun. I've done some pretty big and crazy videos already, though, that I'm really proud of, so you can check them out. They're on your screen right now. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time with a brand new video.